Hello and welcome to Psyched, the show where we explore psychedelics through social, economic, and political perspectives. two speakers, Jerry Brown and Julie Brown. They'll be speaking on mystical experience and psychedelic assisted psychotherapy. Jerry V. Brown is an anthropologist and Julie M. Brown is a psychotherapist. They co-authored The Psychedelic Gospels, The Secret History of Hallucinogens in Christianity in 2016. The Johns Hopkins and NYU studies of the impact of psilocybin on cancer patients found that in both trials, the intensity of the mystical experience described by patients correlated with the degree to which their depression and anxiety decreased. In other words, research scientists have consistently occasioned mystical experiences, flights of the soul, traditionally thought to be beyond the scope of empirical science, in clinical settings by administering high-dose synthetic psilocybin. Furthermore, it turns out that these experiences hold the key to positive patient outcomes in psychedelic-assisted psychotherapy. This presentation explores the role of mystical experience in psychedelic assisted psychotherapy and in psychotherapy using guided imagery. Jerry, uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much, uh, Jerry and Julie, for coming on and welcome to Psyched. All right, so uh, welcome. This is our presentation on mystical experience and psychedelic assisted psychotherapy insights from guided imagery therapy with cancer patients. Uh, we've been introduced, and I'd like to um, move ahead towards our next slides. Um, Stanislav, well, let me start out by, with Albert Hoffman. Uh, Albert Hoffman called LSD my problem child. Uh, later on, Stanislav Grof, the founder of LSD Psychotherapy, uh, called it LSD a child prodigy born into a dysfunctional family. Well, the psychedelic renaissance has provided successful family therapy so that now psychedelics are finally taking their rightful place in our culture. Personally, for Julie and me, who began our psychedelic journeys back in the 1960s, we are amazed and delighted now, over a half a century later, with this second coming of psychedelics. Uh, talking about second comings, our main research to date has been on the identification and photographing of entheogenic mushrooms in Christian art in churches and cathedrals throughout Europe and the Middle East, which we reported in our book, The Psychedelic Gospels. Uh, given, given our own personal life-changing mystical experiences with psychedelics, plus our awareness of the seminal role of mystical experience in shamanism and world religions, we were therefore intrigued to see this quote in an article about the Johns Hopkins and NYU psilocybin cancer studies. In both trials, the intensity of the mystical experience described by patients correlated with the degree to which their depression and anxiety decreased. In other words, a direct correlation between mystical experience and decrease of depression and anxiety. In other words, we have in a clinical laboratory setting researchers evoking a mystical experience, something that was always thought to be beyond science in the realm of religion. Let that sink in for a moment. Uh, this is not surprising for those of us who follow uh, psychedelic research because there have been three seminal studies linking mystical experience uh, to psychedelics. The first goes back to the miracle of Marsh Chapel, Marsh Chapel on the campus at Boston University. Walter Pankey, a graduate student in Timothy Leary's um, a graduate student in Timothy Leary's uh, psilocybin uh, project, um, asked that um, took two took twenty Protestant divinity students. He divided them into two groups. 10 received 30 milligrams of psilocybin, 10 received niacin as a placebo. Nine out of 10 
of the participants who received the psilocybin had a full-blown religious or mystical experience, including Houston Smith, who went on to become a famous professor of religion who called it the most powerful cosmic homecoming I've ever experienced. Later on, about 25 years later, Rick Doblin, who many of you know as the founder of the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic uh, Studies, MAPS, did a 25-year follow-up study, and he found seven of the nine participants who had the mystical religious experience. All seven of them confirmed that this was still one of the most significant experiences in their lives and had beneficial effects. And it allowed Doblin to conclude that there's really no difference, no detectable difference between mystical experience induced by psychedelics or spontaneously. Now, fast forward from 1962 to 40 years later to Johns Hopkins, and we find that um, Roland Griffiths, the grandfather of the psychedelic renaissance at Johns Hopkins, which is uh, one of the preeminent psychedelic researchers, research centers in the world today, did two papers in 2006 and 2008 and found that psilocybin could be safe in a structured, safely administered in a structured setting was among the five most meaningful life experiences for a majority of people and led to improvements in mood and quality of life uh, one year after the sessions. This lasted for, for 14 months. So what is the mystical experience? Well, going all the way back to the research from William, of William James and varieties of religious experience and Walter Stace, uh, Johns Hopkins was able to uh, refine and create a 30 question mystical experience questionnaire. And the five common elements of mystical experience were unity, that sense of oneness and sacredness, a very positive mood, a deep sense of tranquility, the experience transcends time and space, uh, the knowledge that's transmitted is authoritative and a person feels they're meeting their, their true authentic self, and the experience is ineffable. It's indescribable. It cannot easily be put into words. In the in very important 2016 psilocybin cancer study uh, that Johns Hopkins did with 51 patients, uh, about a third of them had depression. These are end of life terminal cancer patients. A third of them had depression, a third anxiety, a third had a combination of both. About two thirds uh, had uh, recurring cancer and another third were faced with possible recurrence. In terms of dose, the high dose was 22 or 30 milligrams of psilocybin per 70 kilograms of body weight, about maybe 150, 160 pounds. And the control dose was one or three milligrams psilocybin uh, for 70 kilograms of body weight. Uh, just as a point of reference, about 22 milligrams of synthetic psilocybin would be equal to about four dry grams of psilocybin cubensis mushrooms. In this uh, research, they found, and this is 70% uh, of the participants who received the high dose six months afterward, classified it as both one of the top five most meaningful and one of the top five most spiritually significant life time experiences. Uh, commenting on this, uh, the uh, Griffins mentioned the high dose psilocybin produces decreases in clinician and self-rated measures of depressed mood and anxiety, along with increases in quality of life, life meaning and optimism and decreases in death anxiety. And with these kinds of findings, uh, Griffiths exclaimed, as a scientific phenomenon, if you can create a condition in which 70% of the subjects achieve positive lasting results in one or two sessions, well, even we researchers are, have a sense of awe. I'm gonna turn this over to uh, Julie, my co-author, and uh, she'll continue the presentation. Hello, everyone. I don't think you can see me, but you can hear me, I hope. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about therapy with guided imagery. 
Guided imagery or visualization is a technique in which psychotherapists help clients focus on mental images in order to facilitate deep relaxation, healing, and resolution of life's issues. In psychotherapy with guided imagery, a client can call on mental images to improve emotional and physical health, at times entering a state of mystical experience. And here we have a, um, a photo of a session, a psilocybin session from John Hopkins. And uh, it's, there are two therapists there and the, the client lying on the couch with her mask on. And the two therapists are just holding the space for her. They're not speaking. Um, so psychedelic assisted therapy versus guided imagery therapy. Well, the John Hopkins protocol, Johns Hopkins protocol is non-directive, encouraging psilocybin study participants to trust, let go and be open without providing instructions on how or where to focus. In contrast, the guided imagery modality is directive with the therapist purposefully focusing clients in order to evoke images and assisting clients in processing and integrating these images. And a key question for cancer clients, in a st deep state of relaxation, a key question posed by the therapist may be to the client, maybe in evoking a healing, to evoke a healing guided image, maybe what is it that you really, really need? For an in-depth discussion based on LSD research of lifelong emotional problems related to cancer, um, Rolf and Halifax's book, The Human Encounter with Death, 1977, in chapter six, you can find an interesting in-depth discussion on this topic. Guided imagery therapy outcomes. Um, this, these are three of my clients from my past as I'm retired now, but quite a while ago. And I just like to go through them quickly. Um, the first one was a male. He was a hospital CEO. He had fourth stage prostate cancer. Um, he was with me um, for a year in therapy after his conventional cancer treatment. His guided image was a healing garden. And he came up with this himself. I didn't give it to him uh, in a deep state of relaxation. Main mystical experience elements for him was unity and oneness and positive mood. And the outcomes were anxiety reduced and full remission. And my second client here was um, also a male. He was a physician. He also had fourth stage prostate cancer. Um, his treatment length for me was two years after his conventional cancer treatment. His guided image was some spiritual self. And his main mystical experience elements were unity and oneness and authentic self. His outcomes were reduced anxiety and full remission. Um, number three client was a female uh, graduate student and she had third stage breast cancer. Her treatment length was a year and a half with me after conventional cancer treatment. Uh, her guided image was a warrior self, her warrior self. And the mystical experience elements, the, the main ones were time, space, and positive mood. The outcome was anxiety reduced and full remission. So guided imagery results accesses the client's inner voice and spiritual self through mystical experience, facilitating empowerment for emotional healing, reduced anxiety, and physical healing, cancer-free five to seven years after therapy, as monitored by client's physician. From discovery to research, these three clinical cases require independent replication in, in controlled studies with sufficient numbers for reliability. So can this anecdotal success in reducing tumors with guided imagery be replicated and independently validated? Can psychedelic assisted therapy 
be integrated into conventional psychotherapy with guided uh, imagery in order to accelerate the healing process. I'd like to switch over now back to the psychedelic therapy results. And um, at this point, I just want to thank Julie. I had to give her a full screen uh, so the, the slides were available. But let's come back to the uh, Johns Hopkins findings. And we know that a single moderate dose of psilocybin can produce substantial and enduring up to 14 months decreases in anxiety and depression in patients with life-threatening cancer diagnosis. This leads us to certain questions. Can psychedelic assisted psychotherapy be used not only to alleviate psychological anxiety and depression, but also to actually facilitate physiological healing in cancer patients? And the other question will be, where, where are we going with this? Will long-term costly psychotherapy eventually be enhanced or possibly even be replaced by short-term, more affordable, psychedelic psychotherapy. Now, we understand the impact of psychedelic psychotherapy in terms of its positive outcomes. We understand how it affects the brain from the MRI studies, but what's really going on? How does, is it that mystical experience contributes so significantly and causally to the healing process? Well, here's our, our speculation and our ideas to try to answer this question, which is really the holy grail of psychedelic assisted psychotherapy. As Roland Griffiths has pointed out, psilocybin enables the understanding that all is well in the largest frame of things. How do we get to that largest frame? Well, Robin Carhart Harris and his team at Imperial College in London through their MRI of uh, psychedelics and of the brain, both before and after psychedelics, concludes that psychedelics surpasses the brain's normal software, the regular normal default mode network, creating a super highway to the unconscious. And here's a visual on that. You may remember Nancy Reagan's old thing, this is your brain, this is your brain on drugs with the broken eggs. Well, this literally, this is your brain here in the default mode network. And this is your brain on psychedelics, on magic mu mushrooms. So this, these are MRI images of the brain's neural pathways before and after magic mushrooms. And you can see the expansive number of pathways that the brain is exploring. Carl Jung, one of the two founders of modern psychotherapy, uh, went beyond Freud's ego, id, superego, and identified the spiritual self, which can be accessed from the unconscious in dreams, but also, as we've seen, through psychedelics and through guided imagery. Let's use an analogy here. As in astrophysics, the dark matter cannot be directly detected but only implied through gravitational effects. So in psychology, mystical experience cannot be easily accessed, but can be reliably occasioned through psychedelics. So we conclude that hidden from ordinary consciousness, mystical experience manifests from the dark matter of the mind. And in that mystical experience comes the strength, the confidence, and the knowledge that facilitates healings. Hopefully these reflections on the role of mystical experience in psychotherapy will inspire further explorations of this unique phenomena, the phenomena of mystical experience that holds a key to health and well-being. If you'd like to follow our work and contact us, uh, we're on the web at psychedeliggospels.com. We're on Facebook, our Facebook page is Psychedelic Gospels. You can email me at jbbrown at gate.net and you can email Julie there also and I'll pass that on to her. And for a amplified version of this presentation today, 
you can see our article on mystical experience and psychedelic assisted psychotherapy, which appeared in Psychedelics Today. You can just Google Psychedelics Today and look at the May 28th online article. Uh, thank you very much. And Julie and I are available to take questions. Hey, Jerry and Julie, thank you so much for taking the time and, and sharing the insights. Um, one question I'd love to start off with is, uh, you know, what, what can determine, I guess, the difference in regards to the type of spiritual experience that an individual has? Some folks that I meet have this kind of more um, uh, like atheistic approach or, or a conclusion after an experience. Some really begin to believe in a God. Some believe that they are Jesus Christ himself. Um, what are some of the factors that might play into, uh, I guess, the, the spiritual takeaway that a person has uh, after an experience? Yeah, well, obviously, this goes back to, uh, we've talked about those, and this goes back to the set. What is the set that the person brings? Uh, if you go back to Stanislav Grof's original research after he left Prague and came to the Spring Grove Mental Hospital uh, in Baltimore, of uh, using LSD with terminal cancer patients, some of these patients were very religious and they put this into a Christian framework. Some of them were atheistic. Some of them were illiterate and they had experiences. Uh, one uh, person from, from, uh, uh, who, who was illiterate, he had experiences of past lives in Egyptian cultures. So I, don't th I think we're just starting to form a, uh, a sort of epistemology of the mystical experience. And it's kind of like asking, well, what do you experience on LSD? Well, as we know, people have many, many different experiences. And I think obviously the set mentally that they come to it with and what kinds of issues they're trying to deal with will largely uh, determine this. One of the core findings in chapter six of Stanislav Grof's and Joan Halifax a very important 1997 book, The Human Encounter with Death, was that in many of the cases, each of the participants in that study who was dealing with a terminal cancer found and went back to a lifelong emotional problem, either self-hatred, sadness, abuse, that they felt was the cause of that cancer. And this is possibly the key link why Julie, working with guided imagery, can, and, and patients who've been through conventional cancer treatment can help people uh, achieve a remission from their cancer when they get to dealing with the emotional roots. Julie, do you want to add anything to that? Just that it, guided imagery, like psychedelics, it unlocks things in the body and mind. And um, you know, if you have stored trauma, it, guided imagery works really well for unlocking that trauma. Mm -hmm. it, what I was also hoping to ask was uh, whether experiences of psychedelics can better inform the types of spiritual practices um, and spiritual healing methods that might be more or less effective. Um, so for instance, you know, we have uh, things like, um, well, some of these are physiological, but, you know, acupuncture and Reiki and some of these, uh, you know, spiritual practices that maybe aren't necessarily even touching the body um, or having someone ingest something. Do you feel like the psychedelic experience can allow for us to be enlightened on which of those spiritual practices may be more or less effective um, in a broader sense and then maybe in an individual sense as well? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, this is sort of like, you know, meditation, acupuncture, uh, guided trance, exercise. Uh, guided yeah. exercise. These are all right. like spokes on the wheel. The difference here with psychedelics is that psychedelics are the super highway into the unconscious. And basically, um, these psychedelics can help. In the past, we haven't been able to really study the unconscious well, but they help overcome our ignorance of the unconscious. So there's no doubt about it. If we are inducing mystical experience and 70% of the people having them in the psilocybin trials and many people reporting them uh, from the 1960s anecdotally that you know they were transported to another realm, they met their spirit guide, they spoke with God. Yes, there is no doubt about it that under the right conditions, 
that psychedelics can facilitate mystical spiritual experience. And I want to say from, from our personal experience, this can happen on your own in nature without guides. This can happen in clinical settings and this can happen in guided imagery. My most powerful experience was um, at a concert. Uh, I must have been, it was a long time ago. And uh, with um, a, a combination of things. And I went into uh, space and I was really, really connected to every single molecule of every single moment of my of, of being in that place and it, I came back with all kinds of healing from that emotional and physical healing so it's really hard to quantify it I suppose hope that addresses your question I think we have a session All right, so we've lost our moderator. Um, if you're still tuning in, um, we think our session's over and we'll probably move on to the next session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.